When your body is invaded by an unwanted villain, fingers through clouds, whose diligence my knees and determination so down your body, there will be no oh, ambers hung in the air like oxygen masks on a turbulent the place. The night, that your hijacked conversation had box cutter words too sharp to save real emotions capable of getting into proper Poetry. Webster defines it as writing that formulates a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience in language, chosen and arranged to create specific emotional response through meaning, sound, and rhythm. It has also been defined as beautiful expression. Children, youth, and adults alike in the city of Long Beach use poetry to tell their stories, to influence change in the world, and to heal themselves while also healing others. Voiceway spoke with a handful of folks in Long Beach to give you a peek into the poetry scene in the city. It's, I just say this, uh, from Long Beach City College alone, I've met so many outstanding poets. My man, Sergey Smirnoff, uh, you know, Felipe Moravera, the Young Poets Society. Uh, it's so much talent in Long Beach. It's, it's amazing. Artists, musicians, poets, and, you know, you bring them together, you got a cornucopia of, of creativity, you know what uh, I mean? And poetry comes from the Greek poesis. And basically what it means is to create or to make things. And so literally when I'm writing a poem, I'm trying to recreate my world. And so it's, it's my way of trying to like control my own little universe. Even. So I really liked when we had uh, the Definitive Soapbox at its old location. I haven't been to the, the new one yet, but yeah, that was a really awesome, awesome, fun community. Mm -hmm. So much of what I saw with spoken word poetry is it was becoming very egocentric. And don't get me wrong, any performance art is egocentric. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a byproduct child of hip hop. Hip hop is super egocentric. But you know what I was seeing is that people were feeling uncomfortable getting on the mic to express themselves mm -hmm. because they felt like it had to be this slam death poetry caliber poem. Yeah. And if it wasn't, they felt like they should just keep it. Um, at home, in that on that napkin, in that journal, and so I wanted to let people know, like, no, we can have big crowds, and we can have big features, and we can have a place where you, the brand new poet, feels like you can come and share your work, That's, wherever it's at. There's there's multiple op open mics I can give a shout out to. For example, Definitive Soapbox, um, Viento y Agua, um, Portfolio, and a lot of a lot more people trying to start their own as well. And I think it's absolutely the great. first night of Thursdays, I'm not sure what they call their open mic, but it's at the Gamboa Theater, um, Manazar Gamboa Theater. I really love that because it's really close and intimate and great. Um, but as far as my open mics, I do stay in Long Beach because they're more, everyone's actually there for poetry and there for love. Humility and like a homegrownness, like it's earthy and it's rootsy and, and there's, so many people doing really cool things. Like I, I know I have definitely like two friends who run their own really successful open mic series, which I think is incredible. That they're like, you know what? I think I want to hear more poetry, so I'm just gonna create a vini to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, and then the way that artists connect here, it's like this, it's like a spider web of like inspiration. And um, but they're definitely not going to exist unless people go out there to support and especially go out there on the microphone and be brave, you know, tell your story.